Hello guys, this is Adip. Welcome to my channel Movement Science where I simplify biomechanics with Joe. If you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also check me out on Instagram where I post pictures of all my notes. In this video, we are going to cover the kinematics of your rib cage. So let's get started. So today we are going to cover the kinematics of the rib cage and under that we will cover the bucket handle movement. The next video will be about the pump handle movement. Okay. So first, before we start with the bucket handle movement, first let us understand the rib cage. The rib cage is a closed chain and that's why it has a closed chain motion. Now when I say closed chain, what do I mean? The sternum is attached to your rib, the rib is attached to the vertebra vertebra to the other rib and then it comes back and forms a closed chain right so that's why the motion seen over here will be also a closed chain motion and this motion is determined by three major factors that is the articulation angle that happens at each level the manubrial sternum movement the movement of your manubrium and sternum and also the coastal cartilages which are present over here as you can see the elasticity of the coastal cartilages will also determine the movement at the rib cage. So now that we understand the closed chain motion, let's move on to the bucket handle movement that is seen. So majorly, if you look at the kinematics of the rib cage, it has two major movements, the bucket handle motion and the pump handle motion. So before we start with the articulation and the axis, simply put, the bucket handle movement is the lateral and upward movement of your lower ribs okay that you can see this way outward movement of your lower ribs now let us understand this in detail and to understand the movement in detail first we'll have to look at the axis the axis of rotation for this movement is present at the costovertebral and costotransverse joint and it changes that means as you go from upper to lower rib levels the orientation of the axis at the costovertebral and costotransverse joint will vary. At the upper ribs, it will be more in the frontal plane and as you go to the lower ribs, it will be more towards the sagittal plane. And that's what I mentioned here. The orientation of axis as you go from upper all the way to lower, it moves from frontal plane orientation to sagittal plane orientation. Apart from this, the orientation of the ribs will also change. The ribs, if you can see at the start, are more horizontal. But as you start going lower and lower, they start becoming more oblique. And from 8 to 10 onwards, there are the indirect ribs, right? They do not attach directly to your sternum. Indirectly through these joints, right? The intercondral joints, it attaches to your sternum. So these factors, the orientation of the axis, and the orientation of the rib along with its attachment, indirect attachment to the sternum determine the movement at the lower ribs. That is, it allows lateral and upward movement, especially towards the lower ribs because of the specific orientation of your axis as well as the ribs. So now let us see how exactly these are oriented. So if you take our vertebra and the rib, right? This is where the articulation happens, right? We saw in the previous videos, you can check it out always. Now, the most important thing is the orientation of the axis. As I said, in the lower ribs, it's more towards the sagittal plane, right? So the axis is in the sagittal plane and around this axis, what movement will happen? This, right? The rib will be moving like this around this axis. So that is the lateral and upward movement. And also the orientation is slightly oblique. So the rib is allowed to move outwards. So that is the classic bucket handle movement, how you lift the bucket handle. So now that we have understood the bucket handle movement and why it is caused because of the orientation of the axis, the ribs, and also the indirect attachment to the sternum, let us move slightly higher. What happens above the eight to 10 vertebras? There are the ribs from one to 12, right? So what happens to seven, six, five? So the ribs in between show a transitional zone which show mix of motion. What is the other motion? It is the pump handle motion that we will be talking in the next video. So simply put the upper ribs move in a pump handle motion. The middle 
have a transitional zone which show mix of both the movements and the lowers show a pure bucket handle motion so that's how the movement happens at the rib cage another small point to add to this is your 11th and the 12th rib which do not participate in the closed chain motion why because these are the floating ribs right they don't come and attach to your sternum that's why they do not participate in the closed chain motion of your rib cage so now that we have understood the kinematics of your rib cage specifically the lower ribs in next video we will talk about the pump handle movement that is seen in the upper rib region right so with that we finish off this topic that's all for today guys thank you for watching